All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, and we are talking about Captain Marvel. I just came back from the IMAX screening, and uh, let's talk about this movie. Um, there are going to be spoilers, but whoa, but not right now. I'll let you know when we get into spoiler territory. So, first, we're just going to talk about the general impressions. And like David Letterman once said to Jim James after he heard him play State of the Art on his show, I liked everything about that. Now, I know that there's controversy surrounding this movie, and I'm not going to talk about it. Why? Because I don't care. I don't care about the controversy surrounding this movie. I don't care what Brie Larson said or didn't say. I don't even know. I don't really care. She took some shots at, at, at guys. Whatever. Ooh, I think we, we can take it. Um, but that being said, forget about that. Was the movie good? And yeah, I thought this movie was really good. Um, it's not better than Infinity War. It's not better than Captain America Civil War or the Winter Soldier. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 good to me, and I consider Guardians of the Galaxy to be pretty up there. Uh, volume 2, anyway, and 1. I think that's about as much fun as I had. Like, I enjoyed it on that same level. Um, I think I really needed this movie to, to kind of as an appetizer for Endgame. Um... Because it connects a lot of dots, you know, it gives us little bits of extra information, things leading up to what's going to happen in the MCU, you know, with, you know, whether, you know, with the Avengers and all that stuff that's coming. Um, I really like Brie Larson in this. Um, I, yeah, I felt like in the trailers they were, she was kind of bland looking, but here's the thing. That's kind of how Car Carol Danvers is. Um, she does have a really dry sense of humor, which I really, really like. I like, you know, Captain Marvel's, Carol's personality in this. I really, really do. I feel, I like people that talk to me and that talk the way uh, she does. I really do. I respond to that kind of person in real life. Um, and so I don't, you know, you can take whatever you want. People are people, right? You know, uh, and, uh. Sometimes you just don't like people, and sometimes you do. And I, I happen to like what they did here. I really like what she did here. Um, and, and yeah, this movie has, you know, feminism, you know, hints of feminism in it, and who cares? Um, I think that, you know, after all this time, you know, it's good for there to be a movie that maybe at points is a little just slightly heavy handed about it. it I don't care. I really don't. Girl power all the way. I don't care. You're like, girls should, women should feel empowered. And if this is a movie that uh, makes them feel empowered, great. More power to it. Um, I just, I really enjoyed though, like going back to the '90s, seeing how Shield was back then, uh, seeing you know Nick Fury pre everything before the eye, you know before he loses his eye and all that stuff. Uh, Jude Law is fine. Uh, Lee, you know, like Lee Pace is back as Ronan, but it's really just a glorified cameo. And it's just, it was kind of a cool thing to tie in to the rest of the, the universe saying, you know, like, you know, things were actually bigger and closer than we ever thought. Uh, Ronan's a guy that was helping Ronan in Guardians of the Galaxy played by Dijmon Hanzo or whatever. He's back in this as the character from Guardians 2. And he, again, glorified cameo, really. He gets nothing. In fact, Jude Law's whole little group of guys seem to have, like, a lot of personality, kind of like the Warriors 3, or that second group in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 that Stallone heads up, where you kind of are really curious about what they're doing, and they don't get anything to do here. It's just, they're just some actors that you may or may not know, uh, playing characters that really look like they might be a lot of fun in a different movie. Um, the cat, yeah, at first I was like, what's the big deal with the cat? But once I figured out the gimmick, uh, and what was going to happen, uh, and I called it too, but it was, it, it was still fine. It's just, yeah, the, the cat's interesting. The cat adds something to it. If you can't see it coming from a mile away. Um, her friend, uh, Rambo, which I, I think is funny. Her name is Marion Rambo. And uh, it's spelled in like E-A-U-X, but still, I, I heard, first time I heard Rambo, I was like, oh, she's Rambo. All right, so she's going to, you know, shoot up a 
a little a small town and then uh, try to take Vietnam back from the Vietnamese. I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's really not much for that actress to do either. That's one of my only problems is, is there's a bunch of characters in here that really just don't get enough time to be developed. Um, even Carol, at, to, a, to a point, is underdeveloped a little bit here. They're trying to push in a lot. They're trying to tell us a lot of story and kind of jamming it all in there. Um, but again, and, and if that's like the hindrances, like, look, honestly, if Black Panther was nominated for Best Picture, this could be nominated for Best Picture, too, because this is, this is, I like this better than Black Panther. I definitely could tell you that. Uh, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think I'm still mad that it got nominated. I don't know why I'm mad it got nominated. I should be happy it got nominated. Um, Sam Jackson in this is fantastic fantastic I, I you know you get to see a different side of fury don't call him nicholas don't call him nick just fury and if he ever has kids fury um he is really really great in this i, I and and uh clark greg uh is back as phil colson and he you know i was in the theater and when clark greg showed up everybody lost it everybody was so everybody's always so happy to see phil in these movies. So Clark Gregg, he doesn't get much to do, like, again, like hardly anybody else does. Even Annette Benning, you know, she doesn't get anything to do in this. This is Captain Marvel's movie with a close secondary character is Nick Fury. He's in a ton of this movie as well. Um, the whole story, it's the Skrulls versus the Kree, uh, you know, Vers, as they call her, uh, is helping the Kree try to fight the scrolls that are invading their territory and uh it's this whole it's this whole thing the Kree are supposed to be these like big time you know superhero warriors of the galaxy and the scrolls are supposed to be the evil infiltrators that try to you know take everything and you know it's it's they're they're trying to say something in this but they've been saying it in the comics with the Kree scrolls versus the Kree forever it didn't change the fact that I really was excited to see how they were going to handle this and I really I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised um how they handled it and even more I they took it in a direction that I didn't think they were going to take uh, it's not that that, and it's not to say that that direction couldn't make a really big 180 later on in uh, future movies, um, with it, what involves with the scroll and the crease and how you're supposed to view them. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting, um, and you know the, the whole thing is Carol coming, finding her way back to Earth, not knowing that this is where she's from. This is you know her trying to discover herself, and how to control her powers, and it's. It's uh, what I like about this is, and I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to get into spoilers. So, before I get into spoilers, um, we'll just say my final verdict is definitely go see this. Um, I will probably see this again, uh, before the weekend is over. I'm gonna go see it in 3D this time. The IMAX I went to wasn't IMAX 3D. But it really was great seeing it in IMAX. This is an IMAX type movie. I don't know if it's an IMAX 3D movie. Well, if you can see it in IMAX 3D, that would be something. I'm, I'm, but like, never mind. Just go see it, <laughs> okay? Because I really do think that it's way better. You know, there's so many people that want you to pull you in some direction about this movie, and just don't listen to them. If you want to see it, just go fucking see it. It's good. I liked it a lot. I really, really did. And so now we're going to get into spoilers. So uh, if you haven't seen the movie yet, stop it here. It's about nine minutes in. Uh, and the rest of this video is going to be spoilers. So you can't skip to the end because I'll still be talking about spoilers. Um, so, all right, let's talk about spoilers here. So, yeah, uh, Annette Benning as Marvell. Uh, that was that's pretty cool, but again, it, the, the predict, there were some predictable things in this movie, and, and that was one of them. But that's fine. I like I like Annette Benning. I like that they you know make her also uh, the AI, uh, the Cree AI that uh, Bree uh, that Captain Carol. There's so many different names that Carol sees, um, and she doesn't have that much to do. But it's it's Annette Benning. She owns it. She's great. Um, the thing they do at the beginning of this movie with uh, the Marvel logo and Stan Lee, and just it all being about Stan, was great. 
That was great. I was, you know, I, I, I listened to uh, the real Gino at Real Gino uh, reviews on uh, YouTube. And he told me, you know, that he said something about the, the Stanley stuff. He didn't spoil it or anything, but I, I, I'm really, yeah, he, he did it justice when he described it as it's going to bring a tear to your eye. I, I wasn't, it didn't bring a tear to my eye. I just thought it was really, really well done. That it was all just images of Stan in different times, periods and stuff. And then uh, getting the thank you, Stan. Um, and then his cameo, which was fantastic. Again, uh, uh, the real Gino uh, said that it, it was poignant to his, his, his cameo was important to like around the, the time period that this takes place. It fits. This cameo really fits. And when he said that, without spoiling it, I said, I wonder if it's going to be about mall rats. And it was. He was reading the script to mall rats on a bus because Stanley needs to drive a, be on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and he was reading his lines from Mallrats, and I just thought, that was so goddamn great. That was so great. I, and it made me start going, maybe he's in, Mich in Minnesota or wherever Mallrats took place. Oh, it's supposed to be in Red Bank, right? So yeah, they're, I guess they're in New Jersey, maybe? I don't know. But it was really, really good. Um, and here's something, okay, just to let you know how much I liked this movie. Um, here's a scale. There's a scale, and maybe I should start using it from now on that I give to grade movies that, of this kind of caliber, like superhero movies and Star Wars and things like that. And that is, uh, while everybody else is laughing and, and, and getting really into the movie, I usually am pretty internal about everything. I'll have a pretty big smile on my face if I'm enjoying something, uh, and it, it'll go bigger and bigger uh, depending on what's going on. But the real test for me is my goosebump test. How many times during a movie do I get so excited or taken aback or just shocked into goosebumps where I, I'm just really, really invested in this movie? Uh, with Infinity War, it happened like pretty much the whole movie. But in this movie, it happened a good like six, seven, eight times. And that to me already says like if you can get me that invested where you've got me shivering with goosebumps uh, probably once every 20 minutes. Uh, that's pretty damn good, and I know that's weird. I don't know if anybody else gets that, but like certain times, man, we're just, it just, it comes out. And so that's my grading scale, I guess I should maybe start working with is this was a, an eight goose bump <laughs> movie. Um, the cat. Okay. So goose, uh, they, Ben Mendelssohn's scroll character, uh, calls the cat a f frelig. Frelig, something like that, and nobody really did anything. Nobody meant. Nobody like. I couldn't hear anybody in the audience like say anything, and I turned to my nephew and said, "That cat's gonna turn into something," <laughs> because everybody's just going, "No, it's a cat." They're being so adamant that this is not what you say it is. It's a cat. Why are you so scared of it? And it's like nobody trusts the scroll guy that this cat's gonna be something else, and it is, and it's pretty funny. And yeah, a lot of this cat is CGI, which it, it's better. It looks a little bit better than Garfield, uh, but it's all it's fine, and it's silly, and it's funny, and it gives everybody kind of a a chuckle uh, when the cat does stuff. Um, the tentacles, and okay, let's talk about the tesseract. Okay, so the tesseract was taken by uh, Red Skull, right? Okay, and then it shot up wherever and went down in the water, right, with Steve. So how did, like, I'm trying to figure out how the, the, the Tesseract got, gets to where it goes. It's got, it's with the cat. So there's like more information like here that uh, is going on with this Tesseract thing. And even though it doesn't really matter now in the long run, I am kind of interested in the journey of the Tesseract. Um, another kind of through line is that Tesseract. It's been in a lot of movies. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Jude Law being the villain in the end, sort of the villain, you know, uh, wasn't, wasn't a surprise. He's good in it. Um, he's kind of buff too. He's getting, uh, he's starting to push his age a little bit here, and I thought he was pretty good. Um, the whole thing with uh, 
damn it. I'm, I'm, one second. Okay, so I also like that Carol doesn't kill him. Like, she doesn't have, and this is where maybe, you know, some people get a little twist in their butt about what Captain Marvel says, you know. It, but this is a movie about, you know, being a woman. And, and to me, no, it's not. It's, I, 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 Brie Larson's a very pretty girl. But never once in this movie was I focusing on the fact that she was a woman. I just, is, I found her character really interesting. So all the feminist stuff that's in this is, is, I gotta stop talking about it. I said I wasn't going to and here I am talking about it. Um, <laughs> man, all right. Okay, so Nick Fury, they kept having this fake out with the eye thing. And even though it was kind of like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? I do find it kind of funny that he lost his eye because a cat's, a frillig, a frillig. A cat that wasn't a cat scratched his eye and it got infected and now he has to wear a, an eye patch. Um, the scrolls, let's talk about the scrolls. The thing that I've been, I, I really was looking forward to and they don't overdo it, but the whole, and I think they didn't overdo it on purpose. I think that they're wetting our appetites again. This is like a, 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 a appetizer of scrolls <laughs> that we're gonna like see more of them in the future and so we we just started to see like how cool their shape-shifting abilities can be and Ben Mendelsohn who again like he, you think he's gonna be the villain and they flip it see the scrolls in a lot of stories are the really bad guys but see the Kree are also not that great so it's kind of like one of these damned if you do damned if you don't pick the side that's gonna give you the least amount of damage and in this they, they paint the scrolls as victims. Um, and that's not always the case in these in the stories of the Marvel world about the scrolls. Um, but it was I, I like that they flipped that. See, that's how you subvert expectations. You don't change, you know, you you take something that you think is gonna be one way and you, and you make it all right. Like I was I completely sold on the scrolls being uh, victims? No. Because I think that there's going to be more to this story later on. I do like that they, in this, were kind of victims. And that the Kree, in order for her character, uh, Carol, to change, she had to prove, it had to be proven that she was kind of working for the enemy. And that she'd been, you know, there's another way for her to look at things. That they, she was being controlled to do things because of her power. Um, and so... Yeah, I really like what they did with the scrolls here, and I really like the look of them because I, they are a very strange-looking race of characters, and um, they've been, you know, the special effects on them were good to kind of weird. Some of them looked really cartoony, but you know that's all right. Um, the fact that this took place in the 90s, uh, yeah, there are some definite, you know, real 90s moments in here, but it's all good. It's all, it's never, never too much. Um, the song at the end with Hole, that was almost like, I was a little like, why are they picking this song? But I get it, I guess. Um, but most of the music in this was really good. Um, I like that she's rocking a nine inch nail shirt throughout some of this. Um, and I feel like that's about all I really want to say. Um, the end, I didn't stay for the very, very end credits. So let's talk about that mid credit scene, though. The one that, I'm sure that the end credits was some, supposed to be something funny, but the mid credit scene was the thing that we really need to talk about. And that's, we get Cap, we get Black Widow, we get uh, Bruce Banner, we get uh, War Machine. All in this room with the, the pager that uh, Carol gives uh Nick, at the end of the movie, only in emergencies, it turns off. And uh, they got to get it turned back on. And I just, I, I don't know. Then, okay, so they're like, what's going to happen? I want to know who's at the other, Black Widow says, I want to know who's at the other end of this thing. She turns around and Carol is standing right there. Yeah. Where's Fury? I love it. I love it. That was fantastic. It was so fantastic. I was like, we're leaving. That's it. I don't want to stick around for anything else. You can't top it. I don't care if there's something funny. I will read about it later. I will talk about it later. I won't talk about it later. But anyway, 
That's it, Captain Marvel, good stuff. That fight scene on the bus with the old lady is fantastic, I love it. The reaction of people on the bus, I, that's one of the cool things about this, is people's reaction to aliens and things like that. Fury, you know, Fury's reaction, Coulson's reaction, it's just regular people's reactions in this is very cool and in some ways very 90s. So anyway, if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Otherwise, this is Rob saying, go see Captain Marvel as soon as you can. I'm going to see it again uh, before this weekend is over, probably. Uh, so this is uh, just, I got to go to bed. I got to be up in like five hours. So <laughs> I'm just way tired. Photon blasts were badass too. Her powers were kick-ass and the special effects were kick-ass. And yes, Thanos is could be in for it. But I really don't think that that's what's going to happen in that. I think, yes, we've got an ace up our sleeve now with Captain Marvel. But I don't know if Carol's going to be the main linchpin. I think she could definitely be used as a distraction to Thanos uh, while something else is going on completely. And I hope it has to do with that man. And I think a lot of other people are like that too. So anyway, have a great night. And we'll see you next time.